Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to tonight's matchup between your Boston Boxers and the three Bender Taylors. Proud tonight, we'd like to take this opportunity to encourage you to display your support and to everyone involved. Please do your part by showing respect to every spectator, athlete, coach, and official involved in today's contest. Inappropriate behavior or language will not be tolerated and may result in removal from the gymnasium. This game is being played according to the rules of the And now for your starting lines. Starting with the event for the Number one, Alcina Bender. Number three, Tasha Bader. Number 22, Andrea Sequeira. Number 23, Monica Bader. And number 34, Jenny Franklin. And now, the starting line for your Brockton Boxers. Number one, Jayla Smith. Number 14, Antoinette Oko. Number 20, Kanari King. Number 30, Angelina Fernandez. And number 33, Rebecca Tanner. The Brockton Boxers are coached by Chris Harmon. At this time, would you please stand for the playing of our national anthem? Gentlemen, boys and girls, basketball fans of all ages, this is Staff Gymnasium, home of your Brockton Boxers. And today, it's a big three divisional matchup with the Boxers having the opportunity to clinch the division outright in a berth in the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs. I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, as always, joined alongside my broadcast partner and alumnus of Brockton High School, Alex Wish. Alex, girls basketball, big three. Heated rivalries over the last couple of years, but Brockton has gotten the better of these New Bedford Whalers and the Durfee Hilltoppers, for that matter, the last couple of seasons. Looking forward to doing so again tonight. I think uh, I think we're going to have a close matchup tonight. I think uh, you'll have a very good matchups. I think both of these teams, looking at both of them, they have they have a good even matchup players. Well, the big shock for the Brockton Boxers looks like Elizabeth Williams is in street clothes. She is the starting center. You can see her right there in the white pants gray sweater. So the Boxers changing up their starting lineup. Antoinette Elko, Jayla Smith, Canary King, Rebecca Tannis. Among the New look starting lineup for the Boxers in this big three-divisional matchup. The Whalers wearing their visiting red jerseys, white numbers. Brockton in their home whites. Red trim around the black numbers. Antoinette Oko slaps the opening tip right into the hands of the Whalers, whom we do not have a roster for, so we're going strictly off of numbers for them. 
Oko grabs the loose ball, and now it's New Bedford. A wild shot off the side of the backboard, no good, and now it's Canary King for the boxers. King running out of room. A little miscommunication there. Now a wild pass looking for Oko in the paint. Gerald Smith grabs the loose ball. Very sloppy play early for both teams. Oko down low. She is manhandled by three whalers and somehow gets called for a travel. I think she was just mixed up there trying to get close to the, the basket. But uh, ref saw it took too many steps. That's a travel under the basket, and it is called justly on the New Bedford Whalers. Canary King down low, although I just took a look at the Brockton bench. Both Williams sisters, normally both starters for Chris Connolly's Lady Boxers, dressed in street clothes. Alex, of course, just a freshman. Elizabeth the yeah. junior. Both of these teams starting out uh, with poor ball handling. You know, the boxers need to work on their handling a little bit here early in the game. Try and take control. There it goes again, you know. What I was just saying. Ball handling has not been good and the boxers yet suffer another out of bounds. That was Angelina Fernandez, the junior, who just tipped that pass. New Bedford able to recover. And if New Bedford should win here, there will be a tie for the Big Three division. Both of these teams would make the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs. And a couple of minutes into this first quarter, we are still scoreless. Antoinette Oko missing a shot. New Bedford coming down with the rebound. Well, that was probably one of the better shots so far of both teams. It looks like they've just been throwing it up. But that looked like actually a quality shot. Jill Smith for three. No good. Of course, Jill Smith's father, the good head rebound. coach. Marcel Smith of the Durfee Hilltoppers had to coach against his daughter, here at Staff Gymnasium just last week. Jayla Smith got bragging rights for the household for that one. A blowout. Brockton won by about 30 points. Chris Connolly in his second year, I believe, as head coach of the Brockton Boxers. Tannis coming down with the rebound, trying to get it to Canary King. A little miscommunication again there. Now it's Fernandez down low off the bottom of the rim. New Bedford takes over, and we're still scoreless. Fernandez beyond the arc. Overhanded, two-handed pass over to Canary King in the corner. She misses the three. New Bedford with the rebound. Short jumper for two, and that's no good for the Whalers. Up and down the court they go. The first bucket could win this one. Canary King lays it up and in. And the boxers there draw first go. blood. It's good. Found an opening. That's what they need to do more of. Not just put a shot up. Try to find your lanes. 2-0 boxers. But as I say that, New Bedford hit a short jumper. And the bucket is good. And one for number three of the Whalers. They'll get a possible three-point play out of this. Take the lead. Entering the game now is Annalie Lorenzo, the sharpshooter from beyond the arc. The three-point play, no good. Looks like New Bedford will get the ball back because Brockton knocked it out of bounds. So they'll get a chance to set up here in the offensive zone. All tied up at two. 
Oh, another foul. And a foul beyond the arc, so we're three point free throw attempt for the Whalers. It'll be number 23 taking it. Not really a good D by uh, Brockton there. First free throw, no good. Number 10, Layla DePina coming in. She replaces Antoinette Oko. Makes the final shot. No, you can play one. Free throws could come into play, especially when you're missing two out of three for the New Bedford Whalers. With how little amount of shots have fallen thus far, and now a layup. No good. Foul from behind by Fernandez. And another couple of free throws coming for the New Bedford Whalers. Well, this is real costly for Brockton here. You know, they, they can't go down and try to set up at all. And, you know, New Bedford had a good defense, you know, playing panic mode right now. Well, it'll be interesting to see on the back end of this game how much these early fouls cost the Brockton Boxers in terms of players fouling out. It's Fernandez's second, so she will take a seat on the bench. Girls are allowed six personal fouls before they foul out of the game. Here's DePino. DePino over to Jayla Smith. Smith to Lorenzo. She takes a long three. No good. Offensive board for You're Rebecca right Tanis. High off glass and in. Nice bucket right there. That, that made up for it. Uh, three for the Whalers. No good. Four to three. The score brought it on top. In an absolute barn burner here at Staff Gymnasium. Annalie Lorenzo thought about the three. Gives it down to Oko at the bottom of the three-point arc. Now Jayla Smith. Nice She'll heave up the tray. No good. And a jump ball is called. Rockton will retain possession. There's a nice little pass formation right there by the boxers. The lady boxers, excuse me. You know, finding the lane, passing out. Trying to get in the paint, nothing open, passing it back out, trying to take a shot. Wasn't that bad. And a turnover and a breakaway for the Whalers, number 10, laying it up. No good. You got to hit the easy meatball, as Miles Jackson would say. Loose ball, Jayla Smith picks it up. Smith to Lorenzo, and she barely keeps it inbounds, but New Bedford takes over. Short jumper, no good. Lorenzo chasing it down. She'll grab it with a little bit of room to spare. And now the boxers head up court. DePina can't grab the pass in New Bedford. And up and down, down the they ball. go. Italy Lorenzo coming up with the loose ball here. And a timeout called by Chris Connolly, who has to do something. Uh, that was a good timeout by the boxers right there. I mean, you're, you're going up and down the court. It's helter-skelter. You, you need to take a breather here. Nobody's going to be doing any quality shots when you're going up and down like that in the court. Well, the boxers really suffering from the loss of the Williams sisters. The starting center and the starting point guard, Alexandra and Elizabeth. Now, I don't know what's going on, but uh, it seems like they're hurt. Or, you know, players need a rest or... Something, but yeah, it definitely does hurt the boxers in this game trying to have a good chance of getting a W today. This game happening a short 48 hours after the Super Bowl. 
give me a little breakdown of that later on. Yeah, a beautiful day today. That parade in Boston. 60 degrees. It's beautiful today. It's a shame I couldn't make it into the city. But it's absolutely beautiful. Guys had their shirts off. <laughs> David Andrews running <laughs> on the front of a duck boat. Oko for three, no good, and we're right back into the missed shots and turnovers. I think they would have their shirts off and just in general. Uh, just, you know, waving their arms, moving around in the duck boat, skin real hot. Lapina down low to Oko, and she nice hits shot. a long two. Six to three, the score, Brockton on top. Kanari King gets ready to come back in the game for Brockton. And another foul called on the Brockton Boxers. In what I think thus far has been the sloppiest game that I have witnessed this season. Thus far. For both teams. Well, being this is uh, my first game watching, uh, I can't really tell you well, what was bad. So, I mean, but, yeah, it is pretty sloppy right now. Uh, both teams. King to Lorenzo oh, miscommunication. Man, Lorenzo loses it. That's a double dribble that's not called. Tenari King now driving lane. Bad angle shot, no good. And Bedford with the rebound and throwing it out of bounds. Anytime these days you think New Bedford basketball, you think. Brian Rudolph, the head coach, the coach last season brought the Oilers into some form of contention for the playoffs. And he was hosting, at least from what I heard, off season practices. Nothing formal or whatever. But he had a majority of the team there, and they were billed as optional summer workouts. And the MIAA found out about it, and because it was, quote, out of season, Brian Rudolph was, was suspended for a year, and the way that high school coaching contracts work, if you appoint a coach for the period of a year, because this happened before the season had started, it is the full season that Brian Rudolph was suspended for, you end up giving the job to a new coach who then can choose whether or not to come back next season. So Brian Rudolph was essentially fired from being the coach of the New Bedford men's basketball team because of a few off-season workouts. And when you think about that in the grand scheme of things, what would you rather these 12 to 15 guys rather be doing? Playing basketball or with adult supervision? Or something that we should not mention, you know. I mean, come on. But a little practice doesn't hurt. I mean... It's not. It wasn't anything official. I mean, it's just it's just practice. It's just pick up basketball. Just like you know, you have a pick up game of baseball, or you know, hey, let's just toss the pigskin around. You know, it's not not a big deal. It's not like you're you're um, giving these players uh, PEDs or anything or something to that to that extreme. That's just the MIAA being their usual helpful selves. I mean, it's only going to better a player to practice in the offseason. So when the season comes around, you know, 
They're ready. The buzzer sounds, and we are at the end of the first quarter, believe it or not. We've got a real good one shaping up here at Staff Gymnasium. It is seven to five boxers. No, that's not a football score. No, that's not a hockey score. We are playing basketball, and there has been more turnovers than points here well, tonight. Well, I mean, yeah, there, there has been a lot of turnovers. This has been poor ball handling, both, both squads. And, you know, you just throw up shots. You know, you're not going to score a lot. You know, you got to pass the ball around. You got to you got to pass. You got to try and oh, find open lanes. There was there was, you know, one play the, the lady boxers had where they found their lanes and, you know, they went to the hoop, scored. And it was perfect, but you know, it's a, it's a rare occasion uh, for most of the first quarter from what we saw. So let, let's briefly talk about professional basketball. Interested to get your take on the Anthony Davis situation. And I finally learned why the Celtics can't trade for him until July. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's part of the collecting bargaining agreement. Not the NBA. Um, so you, you can't trade, and that's yeah. the key word here, you can't trade or have two max contracts yeah. on your roster that were traded for. Right. And the Celtics, and Kyrie. Kyrie Irving, they traded for him. He's got a max contract. Yeah. So the only way the Celtics could get Anthony Davis right now is to exactly. trade Kyrie Irving for him. Exactly. Which isn't going to happen. No. The Celtics are cautiously trying to sign him to a new contract. Right. Uh, and if that happens they July can't, 1st... Yeah, they can't do that until the offseason. Right. So if Kyrie signs a new contract, he's no longer under the contract that was traded for, and therefore the Celtics could add a max contract via a trade, which would be Anthony Davis. Right. Uh, if you want my honest opinion, uh, I don't think he's going to go to the Lakers by Thursday at 3 o'clock deadline. I certainly hope so. I And I don't think he's going to go to the Celtics next season. It's, it's not in his best interest, and I, and I, I think it, the Celtics would have to pull something really hard, a real good um, deal for him and the Pelicans. Danny Ainge, to pull the trigger on that, he would, in the great words of John Madden from the 2001 Super Bowl, he would have to let it all hang out and really, really be confident that you can re-sign Anthony Davis at the end of next season. The the only way I see it happening, if the Pelicans do wait until July to trade, is the only way I see it is them getting rid of uh, Tatum. Like, if you want Davis that bad, you're going to have to sacrifice Tatum. And I've seen reports that that's been discussed amongst the Celtics front office, which is a scary thought because when you think of Anthony Davis and Kyrie Irving, you'd want to see a big three of sorts like we had in 2008. Right. And you'd want Jason Tatum to be that third piece. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's he's only in his second year, uh, second pick in the draft. We have our first... Points of the second quarter. And the Whalers take a 8-7 lead. It's a big three right there. And a chance to add to that lead at the free throw line is number 14. So, all in all, I don't see the Celtics landing Davis. I see him going to a Western Conference team. Yes. But see, that 
with with all the not that you want to shy away from competition, but if I'm guaranteed a max contract for any team I play for, and with the bonuses that are available, I would absolutely want to be in the Eastern Conference because it's a clear path to the finals. And you get all those extra bonuses from making each playoff series and winning each playoff series. And then you may have a snowball's chance in hell against the Golden State Warriors or the Houston Rockets or whoever comes out of the West. But you can only have so many super teams in one conference before one of them doesn't make the playoffs. Mm hmm. And it's already so crowded at the top with Golden State, the Lakers, Oklahoma City's always up there, San Antonio always makes a run, Houston. I mean, this five right there, and I'm just getting started. I'm just thinking off the top of my head. I mean, Portland's usually pretty good. Yeah, the, the whole situation is just a doozy. I, it's just like, there's so many things that could happen. There's so many different teams that could be in the mix. It's like this in any sport where there's a superstar. Let me just look what, what's going on with Bryce Harper in the MLB. It's just like, this, this kind of, when it comes to a superstar being traded or, or anything like that in any major sport, it's always a huge deal. And it, it always comes down to like, it always comes down to that last second. And it's never like an easy done deal, like right off the bat. It's always comp there's always complex uh, situations that arise. There's always drama. There's always rumors and, and all this. And what most, most superstars do is that their agents try to like, you know, stay out of the media. Stay. Don't we? Don't not going to reveal anything. The, and their agents basically like they want the best situation for them. They want them to get the most money and and all that in, in a contract. So they have them play smart. They're like, don't say where you want to go. Don't say that I'm going to be signing here or there. Um, keep keep your mouth. Shut. But but Davis's agent took the exact opposite approach. And I forget what method it was. Probably a tweet. That publicly requested a trade from the Pelicans. And then said wherever he's traded to, unless it's Los Angeles, would be a one-year stop. And he will sign with the Lakers next offseason as a free agent. Unless he finds that ideal situation, which I think for Anthony Davis would be in Boston, not just because I'm a Celtics fan, but because if you have Anthony Davis, Kyrie Irving, Jason Tatum, you are absolutely in cruise control until the finals. Oh, yeah. Toronto can't keep up with that. No. The, the only way I see them getting him and not getting rid of Tatum is um is basic is basically you have to get rid of Terry Rozier, um, you may get, have wanted to trade anyway. Terry Rozier, Marcus Smart, um, a couple other utility players like uh, uh, Tyus, or what is his name? Thad? Da Daniel Tice. Daniel Tice. Tice. Um, Few other good utility. I mean, the um, Celtics have some good utility players that come off the bench that can shoot that three or can be in the paint and and give you a nice layup or give you something really good to keep the game going. Um, besides, you know, Kyrie Irving driving in or or Tatum getting points. You have those those utility players come in hand. Um, for the Celtics, they rely on it, and a team like New Orleans, um, who is going to get rid of Anthony Davis, 
and they want they want to you know build something else you know after Anthony Davis leaves they want something else and that all depends on who they view as a franchise player that they can build around now yeah. or how many draft picks are being offered right because if you look at the Lakers latest offer from the weekend it's about two thirds of their roster in a first round draft pick. Yeah. And the Pelicans laughed at it. They said, We're not gonna take Lonzo Ball, Brandon Ingram, uh, Contavious Caldwell Pope. Uh, uh, Ray John Rondo was involved and he's already played for New Orleans, so they already know what they're getting into with, with Rondo. And one first round draft pick. Nice layup right there. 12 to 9, New Bedford on top in a very low scoring affair. Yeah, I definitely, I don't know, um, I don't know the whole draft um, order um, or how much, you know, first round draft picks the Celtics have. Um, but yeah, you definitely, if you're New Orleans, you, you definitely want some first round, uh, first round power. You definitely want to, you know, say, oh, yeah, the Celtics have this pick or, or this team has this pick, and they're going to give us the their first two-round draft, uh, first-round draft picks, and then they're going to add on this player, this player, and this player. Yeah, that sounds good for us. Those are three quality players, and we're going to get two first-round draft picks. Yeah. I think it's going to be a three-team trade for this because – New Orleans can't accept more than four players because they'll hit a roster limit unless they're sending four in return, which they're not. Nor can the Celtics, or Lakers for that matter, afford to give up four or five players yeah. for one in return. Yeah. yeah it, the whole thing's going to be really calm. Complicated. If he is traded before Thursday or by the deadline on Thursday, it will be really complex. Uh, and I, I don't see it happening by Thursday. Well, what's no impressive way. about it to me is Anthony Davis has created to this point a lot of leverage for himself. He doesn't have as much leverage as everybody sees because he's still under contract for the next year. But he's done a lot of work on his own behalf to try to get himself out of New Orleans. Yeah. Which the reasons behind that are still beyond me. But the owner of the team did just die in the last year and a half, so... Maybe it's something to do with ownership, or he just wants a change of scenery. But it'll be interesting. Stay tuned. Yeah. If not by Thursday, we will hold off the discussion until later on in the uh, summer. But, uh, yeah, if it doesn't happen by Thursday, um, yeah, it'll, it'll be a... Nice discussion to have um, come June and throughout the finals. And, like, right after the finals are over, like, okay, what's going to happen with Anthony Davis, with these players, all these free agents? What are the Celtics going to do it, about it? Well, if they don't get Davis, are they going to sign another big name or are they going to go after somebody? Those poor New Orleans sports fans. Yeah, that's tough. They're going through a really tough time down there. I was, I was, I was reading something um, today that um, a, a New Orleans Saints fan was so determined not to watch the Super Bowl this year. That he ended he died. up he ended up passing away. He died four at two hours, o'clock in the afternoon. Four hours before I'm the game sorry. started. This is a, that, now that's determination right there. I mean, 
You can't even get mad at that. <laughs> <laughs> that's determination right there. That's, I, that's I, impressive. I respect it. You know, sorry for the loss, but, you know, I respect the, that, that determination. Like, you knew he was not going to watch. He proved it. It remains one of my favorite jokes of all time. A Cleveland Browns fan passed away. This was a couple years ago. and In his obituary, he requested one line be put into his own obituary. He said, I would like to be lowered into the ground by some of the Cleveland Browns players so they can let me down one more time. Oh. <laughs> well, there's another bucket for the Whalers. They extend their lead. Annalie Lorenzo just hawking them up from all over the floor. Jayla Smith can't keep it in bounds. New Bedford takes over on downs. We have a whistle and some substitutions, it looks like, for Brockton. Fourteen to nine, the Whalers have two touchdowns. The box the boxes with three field goals. <laughs> and the Whalers just added a two point conversion to that total. So uh Bedford that that's their this is their largest lead of the game. Well it was their largest lead. Boxers just uh this cut the lead by two. A lot of foul trouble earlier, the boxers. Speaking of football and Super Bowls, Tom Brady, GOAT number six, coming back. If you saw the post-game video that he started posting this year with one simple letter as a caption, that letter would be W for win. Him and Gronk, the faces kind of said something to this effect. Is Kroon going to come back? Is he? Yeah, I don't know. No, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. Yeah, you know. And then at I, the end it says to be continued. Yes. That's one big hint right there. Um, you know, I don't, I don't really like the media's coverage on Kroon. The media's coverage on Gronk is is always, um, it's a, they always try to put a negative aspect on him. He's a great player, very tough. He's strong, but the media yet still says, "Oh yeah, Gronk's gonna retire. He's gonna do this." Uh, it's unbelievable blah, 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 blah. to me how the media treated. If I was the media, I wouldn't want him to retire. I'd be spinning it the other way. You want him to come back because he gives. The media so much content. Oh yeah. I mean, but and I mean the guy is just a monster on the field, and these I feel like these media people don't understand. Um, I don't think they really fully understand what kind of shape he's in. I mean, the guy is still in good shape. I mean, if he wasn't in good shape, he wouldn't be playing in the NFL. Let's just put it that way. Sure, yeah, you can say he's not at 100%. He's, he's suffered injuries, and it's, it's costing him his career right now and the game right now. But they don't understand that he, he's still Gronk. He can still catch a football. If he w couldn't catch a football, why would he be there? He would already be long gone or on another team by now. or You know, that's why he's still on the Patriots. It's why Brady, the GOAT, still likes tossing it to him. So, like, all these media haters need to, like, quit it. And the referees need to actually start calling penalties on the players that are committing assault and battery on him <laughs> every luck. single play. Good luck, on, good luck to that. Because they just look at him as a big dude who can, 
who can yeah. handle like a guy putting his his arm on. Well, they're him. trying to take away the advantage of his size and strength by letting defensive players do whatever they want to try to even out. Yeah, and that not, advantage, and it's not right. Anyways, if you want my opinion, my take on Gronk and the Patriots, Gronk's coming back for another year. I agree. There's, 100%. there's no doubt about it. Oh, nice steal right there. Tanari King in alone lays it up. And oh, she, she misses the easy meatball. Wow. You gotta finish that. Uh, this is getting painful. I know, uh, I know the pressure's on there. To score, but that's easy buckets, as your as your friend there Miles would say. That's that's just easy, man. Right there. You know, especially when you're down by seven, you, you gotta get two points right there. Down by seven, chance to win the Big Three championship. You gotta hit the easy meatballs. This isn't the Big Three like not a thing? Oh, nice steal right there. Other sounds and trying to be the buzzer beater hero right Layla there. Layla Depina's shot is no good. So at the end of the first half, 18 to 11, the New Bedford Whalers on top of the Brockton Boxers. Your analysis on a interesting first half. Well, um, I'll tell you, it's the same thing I said at the end of the first quarter. This is the Boxers, you know. Both teams aren't, aren't playing good basketball right now. A lot of turnovers. There's a lot of just, you know, hawking up shots. A lot of steals and everything. But, you know, not not some good quality basketball we're seeing here. Um, and I'm not even going to give too much credit to the, the Whalers either. So at the start of the third quarter... New Bedford 18, Brockton 11. Miller's wearing their visiting red jersey shorts. Black trim around the white numbers. Brockton in their home whites. Red trim around the black numbers. Both Williams sisters out tonight, Alex and Elizabeth, which has proven to be huge losses for the boxers. The starting center, starting point guard for the boxers, both out of the lineup tonight for Chris Connolly. Mm -hmm. Tell you that was a good start to the half for the boxers, except for that, you know, that it's taken. It seems like the the theme of this game here, Matt, is this. The boxers are taking one step forward, two steps back. That's that's why I think this theme of this game here is they just got a nice big three to cut the lead down to four. But, you know, the Whalers just got a three-point play right there. They has got a nice layup, and then they got the extra, extra point right there. So now it's, you know, you're back to uh, down by seven. So it's just one step forward for the Lady Boxers and two steps back. It's unfortunate. Right before the half, we were talking Super Bowl. I'm seeing split opinions. Some are calling it the worst Super Bowl ever. I don't think worst is the right word to describe no. it. 13 to 3 was the final score Patriots on top. It was the lowest scoring the lowest scoring Super, Super Bowl, Bowl ever ever. But it's those kinds of games that can be semi exciting with the defensive battle that shapes up. You know, it's also thrilling to like be like on the edge of your seat like who's going to score next or like who's going to get that first touchdown that will mean something. And I mean, to be perfectly honest, after the defense forgot about last year's Super Bowl and didn't show up for that, they had to make up for it somehow. Right. I remember what you were saying during the game was, uh, 
Why couldn't we get... Yeah, if we could get half the defense, half the from, defense this Super Bowl, from this Super Bowl and half mixed the with half the offense from last Super Bowl we and split it between the two games, we would have won both. <laughs> we'd be seven rings right now. Lorenzo from way downtown, no kid. Oh, you got to put Tannis back up followed. that. You got to put up that layup. Come on. But she got fouled, so hopefully she can uh, get two here. You know, I, I got the same. People are telling me that it was the worst Super Bowl they ever saw. There's one. And, and but I, I disagree I disagree with them. I was like I was like, you just saw one of the best defensive games ever. You saw one of the best defenses uh, best defensive show by the Patriots by far. I'm like, come on, they even let him score a touchdown. That's that's just the impressive fact right there. They even let him get uh, even close to scoring a touchdown. I mean, they had a cl few close plays, but the defense came right in hand. And the halftime show was awful. And I, I think the last good halftime show, I mean... Katy Perry was okay. Bruno Mars, I think, was the last truly memorable one. That was a good and one. And he had the, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. I'd have to say Coldplay was not that bad either. Like, but ugh, Maroon 5. Well, I mean, if, if we want to rank the top halftime shows of all time, well, I mean, I mean let's I, go. I, I'll get... Then I, well, some of the really good halftime shows weren't even in this century. We have to go. That's, we have to go back to like Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Michael we Jackson, are the world. I've got uh, I've got Paul McCartney up there. Yeah. I've got Prince up there. Mm-hmm. I'd have to put Bruno at like Bru number Bruno, five. Bruno's up there. But the the performance. By Maroon Five and uh, Travis Scott and, and Big Boy. I think they absolutely blew the opportunity. Everybody was watching that halftime show to see SpongeBob, to see Sweet Victory as performed by the Bikini Bottom Super Band. <laughs> I I and knew. You, I mean, you had about what fifteen seconds of the video clip in there. Not even. I I knew. I knew they weren't going to, you know, oh, there's a, that's a. That's very alert defense. Not, yeah, not, well, not even defense. They're on offense. They're not even, but she's trying to find the passing lane, but she's not paying attention to the defender there. You got to pay attention to the defender there because that's his, that's his textbook right there. She stole it, went on a breakaway. So I, I mean, they could have, they could have done a lot, something really good with Sweet Victory. Um, they they could have um, got the whole crowd into it. They could have uh, Adam Levine could have made a real nice scene out of it. But uh, you know whoever whoever put on that halftime show. Whoever like choreographed it and whatnot, I I don't think they they hired the right person for it. They, you hired me, I would have I would have thought of a million different other things to make that. And that I good. mean, when you think about it, it's completely ridiculous. With a Travis Scott or big boy that came out in a huge fur winter coat. Oh, it was big boy. It was big boy. He comes out in this huge ginormous. I'm going to Antarctica looking jacket. And you're in Atlanta. And you're in Atlanta. And Adam Levine's not wearing a shirt. <laughs> yeah, that that uh that set off the meme world right there. There was a lot of memes about that.
my sister was commenting, she's like, big boy's in a, where, like, does he know where he is? He's in Atlanta. <laughs> but, you know, that was the general consensus from that. It's just like, some questionable stuff from that halftime show. I'm, I'm glad, uh, I'm glad I don't watch the Super Bowl just for the halftime show, because if I watched the Super Bowl just for the halftime show, I'd be pretty disappointed. I'd be pretty mad. <laughs> I, I know people that watch it just for the halftime show on the commercials. And they were both strikeouts this year. Look, well, commercials, I don't have to say the commercials were better than last year. Because commercials last year were kind of weird and some were stupid. The commercials this year, there were some winners this year. But there was others that were like, what? Or like confusing. You know, every year it's like that. I like, I like the... Uh, the commercial with all the NFL alumni at the wedding. That, that was a good one. That was a good one. And uh, the Bud Light Game of Thrones crossover. That, that was a good one. And at the very end, you're like, oh my god, wait a second, it's a crossover commercial. Yeah. Dragon, Fire, Game of Thrones. I liked um, Deets and Watson commercial. Oh, Deets, uh, Deets Nuts. Deets Nuts. Good play on words. It's real funny. Bring back one of uh, one of the memes that has uh, started to die out. Of it. Yeah, right. But uh, I just I just really like the play on words and you know, oof, took a nasty fall right there. The Bedford begging for a call doesn't look like they're gonna get it. The conversation between the ref and the coach happening right in front of us as we sit courtside for tonight's festivities. Twenty-three to seventeen, the boxers down by six in a thrilling big three divisional matchup here. It's gonna come down to who makes less mistakes. That's a big point for uh, Bedford. That was a little that that was a little dagger in the in the lady boxers heart. And it's a three. You know, this is killer. It seems like every time the Whalers are scoring here, um, it's like always a three point play. And it, it's a killer. And yeah, there, there you go. It's either a three-point play, or they don't get the free throw, and then they, but they end up getting the rebound in game two. It's a killer. And now the boxers have their biggest deficit right now. Bar Lady Boxes have digged themselves quite a hole. Carrie King to Oko. Nice. Down low. She converts the layup. Almost coming up with a steal. And we have a call against the Whalers. Jayla Smith to inbound for the Boxers. Lorenzo thinking three rather than it's Jayla Smith. She kicks it out to Layla DePino who takes the three shot. No good. Offensive board for Oko. And now Layla DePino down low off the glass. And then a couple of offensive boards for the boxers leading to a couple of points. Nice steal right there. Able to keep it in. Oh, can't finish. Curry King short jumper. No good. Boxers have a ton of missed shots tonight. Yeah. Tell you right there that they could have easily got four points real quick right there and had themselves back in the game. Still there in the offensive zone. Missed a three point shot there. And 
And the lady boxes just look really flustered right now. They, they've had their opportunities, but there's been several miscues. And there, there's just yet another miscue right there. Go. Okay, Lady Box is trying to make something out of this. 27-23, Box is down by four, trying to work their way back into this one. Yeah, they're on a right now. The Lady Boxers are on a six and zero run. That's a foul. Two shots. So, I mean that. I mean that's the impressive thing. You know, New Bedford hasn't really scored in the past couple of minutes, but the Lady Boxers have gone on a six and zero run. Hopefully, they can continue that. Rainbow free throw is good. Two for two at the line, 29-23 the score. Martin getting a handle on the ball right there, but uh, couldn't keep the ball in bounds. Lady boxers really know how to get their hand on the ball. Um, you know, try to steal the ball away. Good defense right there, making her go out of bounds. Now the boxers end up with the ball again, so hopefully they can make up and try and get a couple more points here. Double dribble. Another miscue for the lady boxers again. Long three. That's out of bounds. Some subs coming in. Very slow moving game in terms of action. There's been a lot of stoppages for fouls and inbounding and what have you. See, uh, I, what I would tell my players right now is if I'm the coach. That, coming down the court just there, they're all on the left side. All five players are on the left side. You got to spread out a little more to open some lanes, to fool New Bedford a little bit. You got to open your lanes a bit. And they're all on the left side of the, of the court. You got to spread out among the uh, paint and uh, outside the paint, left and right side. And there was a timeout called. But lady, I mean, lady boxers uh, in this half so far have uh, stepped up their defense a little bit from the first half. Seen a little bit of improvement uh, on defense. I mean, at some point, you gotta hope to get your your shooter's going because the boxers haven't made a lot of shots thus far in this game. Not for lack of effort, it just seems like the rims are a little bit smaller, the ball's a little bit bigger. But this seems like, as well, you know, they're turning defense into offense, but the offense can't get anything going. You know, they'll put up shots or 
you know, you have an easy layup and, you know, it, it bounces off the rim and Bedford gets it. It's just, you know, the boxers aren't really ha getting their uh, luck right now. And New Bedford is uh, taking advantage of uh, all of Brockton's miscues on offense. And which, that is, one. which is why they're able to, to come up court and get some points. And they, you know, they get the three-point play or, and that, you know, foul shots. And this is really what's winning the game for the Whalers and why they're up by, you know, the, I think, you know, right now they're up by uh, six right now. You know, it's just foul shots. Foul shots and the three-point play that really is is why they have a six-point advantage. If, they, if the boxers were really limited that, they wouldn't have six point six points on them. It'd be maybe a tie ball game, or even boxers who had the lead. Mr. Pino, her layup no good. Gets her own rebound and fouled on the way back up. She'll be at the line for a couple of shots. See again, you know they're you know right there under the rim, and you have a sh shot to put up two, and you couldn't seal it. Hopefully she can drain these two right here. There's one. Twenty-nine, twenty-four. The score. She made up for that layup she was supposed to get. So it's good she made up. Brockton's getting uh, their hands in the right area. Putting their hands on the ball, trying to block the lanes of the of the Whalers. Number fourteen of the Whalers. She's tall. Wow. Another miscue for the Lady Boxers. You can't stall up uh, when you're trying to drive up court. Either move that ball yourself or pass. And if you're not sure who you're passing to, move the ball. That was, that was not good uh, inbound pass for the Lady Boxers. They just basically gave the ball back to New Bedford. I think they just literally just tossed it out of bounds. Nice steal there. with not even a semblance of their starting lineup tonight. Great two right point right there. Boxers back within two, I believe it is 29 to 27. Before that bucket. Just the luck. Just luck right there. Long three is good for the Whalers. And they're back up to the nine point lead now. And the boxers yet again try to go for a long pass. You know, adding up their on the chart uh, miscues yet again. 
That's just not good passing right there, not good basketball. Right at the buzzer, the Whalers get the uh, next points, and they go up by 11. And the boxers uh, in that span didn't really didn't let the let the game get away from them at that that last minute or so. Thirty-six to twenty-seven, the score at the end of the third quarter. Rockin trailing by nine to their big three divisional rival, the New Bedford Whalers, in a game that will solely determine. The championship of the Big Three should Brockton win. They win the division outright. If New Bedford wins, they will each share the division title of Brockton Boxers and the New Bedford Whalers and each make the MIAA South Sectional Playoffs. Once again, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, joined alongside... Brockton High School alumnus Alex Wish. Well, you seem to forget that you're an alumnus as well. Yeah, but I'm at every game. <laughs> Let's not forget, uh, people, that uh, Mad Dog is also a fellow alumnus. Same class as I am, 2011. Greatest class of all time. The only class to graduate. On a Friday. This is true. And it still remains a fact. We're the only class to graduate on Friday, June 3rd. But as a student, Not on a Saturday. I love that because it gave me the whole weekend to party hop. Graduation party to graduation party. All weekend. Yep. Yeah, you didn't... You didn't you know, because if Saturday it would be it it would be at three in the afternoon. It'd be over by six, um, and then you know you have to be with family and for a while, and then you finally get to go out and have a good time. And then before you know it, it's late. It's already you know. Then Sunday happens, and you know nobody wants to do anything on a Sunday. So yeah. Gave you a Friday night to do everything. Saturday to go to grad parties. And at 40 to 27, New Bedford with a 13 point lead looking to extend that. So that's one of the things as a as a fellow alumnus I'm, I'm proud of. Still rants and rave about that. at the free throw line yet again trying to make it a 14 point lead and they do 41-27 your score Brockton trailing Lorenzo in for Depina her layup no good out of bounds off of the Whalers Rebecca Tannis at the line. Good on her first attempt. It's very weird to me that 
both Williams sisters are out for a game such as this. They must have both missed school. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if they're both, if they're both healthy, you know, it must have to do something with school. I know Brockton takes uh, takes academics and and you know school conduct very very strictly. Perhaps uh, my favorite rule at Brockton High: if you miss school, you can't participate in any extracurricular activities that day. Yeah. You know, um, you know, oh, out maybe of, the Williams sisters skipped school and went to the parade. <laughs> Who knows? I'm not saying that that's the case, but you never know. Right. Well, we can't we can't assume anything here, but um, you know, it has to do with something with school if they're not injured. You know. I doubt we're going to get any any release from a coach about it. Um, and they're, they're both here. They're both physically in the gym. They're just dressed in street clothes on the bench. Right. Nice moves here. Good work to create that turnover for the boxers. Yeah, I... I you know, it it must mean something with school, but it's something it's something you respect as as a student. Uh, I mean, some students probably think it's it's not the coolest thing that like oh, oh I had in house today. Um, you know, I was still at school, but why can't I play? It's just you know, it's out of respect. It's something students have to learn. Like hey. You get in trouble in the real world, um, you're not going to be playing uh, basketball. You get trouble in the real If you find yourself in trouble in the real world, uh, guess what? It's not that you can't play that day or you can't work that day. It's You're fired. So it, it, it's teaching them a, a moral lesson. I did have to fact check myself. The Lady Boxers clinched the Big Three division outright when they defeated Durfee last week, sixty-one to thirty-four. That was last Friday evening here at Staff Gymnasium. So they've already, from going off that, they've already basically won the Big Three. So does this this game have any significant impact? I mean, you always want to be the highest seeded you can, so you avoid losing the the top seeded team until the last possible moment. So I don't want to hit with the cliche every every win matters, right? But the difference between playing against Braintree or North Attleboro is huge. So the real shock in uh, South Shore Girls basketball, Bridgewater Raymond, undefeated, 14-0 at my last check. Really? Wow. Brockton played two very competitive games against the Trojans this year. One of the Trojans kind of snuck away at the end, but the other, I think, was only like a six or seven point loss.
the Redford back at the line, and it's now a full 10-point lead, 44-34 to 34 the score. The Whalers are on top. Dale Smith for three, high off glass, no good. Offensive board for Tannis. Gets her own rebound. This one puts high off glass, oh no good. Oh, my God. Another offensive wow. board. This one squirts out to Canary King, and a whistle is blown. Tell you, that, that right there is just the story of the game. That's the story of the game right there. It's just, the boxers do have get their rebounds. It's not a question that they're not getting any re offensive rebounds or anything. It's just that they can't, you know, they're not capitalizing on those offensive rebounds. And it's what you were saying that the the ball the ball is bigger than the rim right now. Point lead for the Whalers. The turnovers continue for both teams. Dale Smith in for Tannis. More missed shots. This ball scrum on the floor, knocked out of bounds by New Bedford. Brockton takes over. And it's at the charity strip for a couple of shots. Six the score, New Bedford up. <laughs> Dale Smith with the ball now, gets it over to Canary King. And another turnover for the Boxers. Long three is good uh, for the Whalers. I have to say that that's pretty much game right there. That that hurts when they when you get a three like that in the fourth quarter. 
That, that hurts. Oko back in. She replaces number 30 of the boxers. Kayla Smith's floater no good. Called on the way up was King. Time of boxers, 48 to 39, your score. New Bedford on top. It's the first of two games here at Staff Gymnasium for the Lady Boxers this week. Lady Boxers at home Friday at 4. You read that right. 4 o'clock tip-off Friday afternoon for senior night. Good steal there by Smith. Puts up the layup. Tannis good. layup is good. Lorenzo Gary King called for the travel. Lorenzo coming up with the loose ball, but New Bedford grabs it right back, and then Lorenzo called for the foul. Ten point edge for the Whalers, fifty one to forty one the score. New Bedford calling for the travel. I could see where they might have seen that. Lorenzo will be at the charity stripe for a couple of shots.
one of two at the line. Boxers have to capitalize here on their free throws. Nine point edge for the Whalers. Pina comes in replacing Oko. Pina tapping the rebound, whistle stoppage, yet another foul called. Jalen Smith, Lila, and Pina come back in. Get on her first attempt is number one for the Whalers. Bringing it back to a 10 point edge for New Bedford. Go to King all the way up for Layla DePina. Across for Annalie Lorenzo. She takes a long three, no good. Hey, she's been taking threes all night, uh, but she can't make any. She can't find one. Counting in one for number three of the Whalers. Lorenzo, normally a sharpshooter from beyond the arc. Yeah. Hasn't gotten close to the line tonight. I mean, she's yeah. taken these from five or six feet back from the three-point line. Yeah. And she's got the range where she can hit it once in a while, but her normal spot is about halfway between the baseline and the top of the key. Now right think, on the line. I think that will put the bar Lady Boxers to rest tonight. That Just that three-point play right there. It's been the story of the night. It's why the Whalers are winning. And I think I think we're getting here close to the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, that's that's just been the story of the night. It's that's how the Whalers are gonna win tonight. Whistle stoppage yet another foul called. And it'll go all the way down the court for Free throws for the Whalers. Fifty-eight to forty-two. The score is sixteen-point edge now for New Bedford. It's time winding down here in the fourth. Another takeaway by the Whalers. Long three. That's no good. Kenari King getting the uncontested rebound. Can we stop blowing the whistles here? <laughs> I 
And we've all got things to do after this game. Terry King good on her first attempt. 58 to 43 the score. Immediate timeout by Chris Connolly. Fourteen point edge for the Whalers. Jill Smith to inbound for Brockton. There is not much time on the clock here. The buzzer sounds, and this one, thankfully, has come to an end. 58-44, to 44, your final score in New Bedford. Coming out on top tonight in... And I guess you could call it a meaningless game for the boxers after already clinching the big three division. Alex, your final thoughts on this game? I I think the uh, the bo lady boxers this they could have taken control of this game if if they played totally differently. It was just a lot of miscues and just. You know, overall, they need to work on everything to improve for the playoffs. For everyone here at BCA Sports, our cameraman Aaron Tebow, our director Phil Filipitas, my broadcast partner Alex Wish, I'm Mad Dog Matt Nelson, and we will see you next game.